Hello guys, welcome to another video. This time I'm going to talk about the tools that we use for remote design sprint sessions. We've been asked about this, so I'm going to share it with you. Before we get into it though, I'd really appreciate it if you like or leave a comment or hit that notification button as well if you want to try and get all of these videos as soon as possible. We try to produce one every single week. Hopefully it's been helpful for you guys and um, I've got nothing else to say. Let's get onto it. The first one is about conferencing and messaging. I've got five different categories here that I'm going to cover, but let's focus on conferencing and messaging first. Um, the first one is the obvious Zoom. Uh, it's important for us to be able to communicate on a daily basis, not just on a daily basis, but throughout the day during design sprint sessions when needed. Um, but Zoom is an obvious one that we use and also Google Meet because here at Relab, we live in the Google ecosystem. So we use Google Meet a lot. So Zoom, Google Meet, Microsoft Teams is the other one. As long as you're able to communicate and talk to each other, video conferencing, I'd say on certain things are, they can be quite important and you, it's almost a must, but there are certain things where you can switch your video off and just focus on the audio. Um, besides, you've got other tools during discussions, which I'll cover later, but there are other tools that will allow you to see each, everyone, each and everyone's activity anyway. Um, the last one is Slack, which you could use to chat um, send quick files and instant messaging really, but Slack, Slack allows you to do quick calls as well from one to another. Um, and um, I'd say with those, with these things or one of these things or two of these things, you'd be covered for video and uh, video conferencing or messaging. The second category is about virtual whiteboards and discussion jam boards. Um, no pun intended, but yes, one of the products are the Google Jamboard, um, which is new. Well, it, it's sort of newish on on Google Chrome and you can use it as part of your Google Meet setup. So if you are already using Google Meet, sometimes the Jamboard will help you uh, do quick jam sessions. But really what you want to use here during the sprint week is a virtual whiteboard or a virtual workshop room. Here in Relab, we use Miro. Miro is obviously another option that is really good as well. So if you've got Miro or Miro, then you've got yourself covered. Um, the other one that we we actually haven't really used that much is Envision Freehand, but that's another Jamboard that you could use. If you're already uh, an Envision account holder or a customer, then you could try it and give that a go. I think there's a lot of improvements in there that they're doing, and um, it's actually pretty good too. Point number three is about prototyping. So here we see some obvious softwares. Uh, in the design sprint session, we love Figma. Not just that though, but we use Figma in general in terms of digital design. But Figma allows people to collaborate. You don't really have to be a designer to use it. If you just want to change text, copy, uh, you could actually go there and do it yourself if you are a writer as part of the, uh, the sprint team. But yeah, Figma is a great collaborative tool uh, that works well, that is a design and prototyping software. So it allows you to do all sorts of things in there. I won't get into the deep with Figma, but obviously there's a lot of other videos out there about Figma. There's also Sketch that allows your stitcher or your designer or your prototyper to stitch up your prototype. Um, and there's Adobe XD does similar things. And Webflow is another one that could really be friendly for development purposes too. The fourth one is user interviews and testing scenarios. So there are a couple of softwares here. There's user testing, there's whereby that is essentially similar like a Zoom or a Google Meet, but you don't need to download the application. You could do it on, um, on the browser and users don't really need an account other than just the link. It'll, it's pretty good for user interviews where you don't know the person, they're just invited into inter a quick interview session for them to share their experience. You can record it, you could screen share as well. Uh, you know, the, the most important features that you can find out of a video conferencing software you can find in Whereby, um, but it's great for user testing. And of course, if you're already using Zoom or Meet, uh, Google Meet, I mean, then uh, by all means, you could use that as well as an invite to your user testers and they can use the link to, um, to try and test your product. Number five is about notes and documentation. Oftentimes get overlooked, but yes, what happens after a design sprint is you need to review the sprint and the outcome around it. So what do we need here is really a document, use Notion. 
use Confluence if you're already in an uh, Atlassian environment. Uh, Trello and Asana works as well too. So as long as you have a ways to record feedback, which is the most important thing out of a sprint, record user feedback, be able to categorize them as positive feedback, negative feedback or neutral and make some next step actions or decision making process out of after that uh, and document it somewhere. And these softwares that I mentioned or just, are just four out of like so many out there. Uh, but what we use here is Confluence because we live in a Atlassian environment with Jira and everything. So we can just integrate the whole thing. But Notion is a great one to look at. And that is it, guys. Hopefully that's helpful. Um, let us know if you know any other softwares that you use heavily and you think it's very useful. I'm sure the rest of the other viewers would really appreciate that too. Um, before we leave, I'd really appreciate it if you like or leave a comment. Let us know how we're doing. Uh, that means the world to me. Thank you.